Welcome to section 2, starting the project. In this section, we are going to bootstrap the project and work on improving its structure and modularity. We'll cover some basic patterns, such as module, facade, and adapter pattern. Also, we'll cover some non-standard ways to match conditions. In this video, we are going to initialize our project, create a list of tracks, and render them. During this course, I'm going to use Sublime Text Code Editor and Google Chrome Browser. You are free to use any code editor and any browser, but I would recommend latest versions of Google Chrome or Firefox. Now, let's create our folder and add it to the code editor. Here is mine. Inside of it, create a subfolder named Application. We'll place all our front-end code into it. Here, I have a git ignore file, because I'm using git for version control. But you may skip this file. Let's unzip the file provided with this video and add its contents into the application subfolder. You should have the same folder hierarchy as me. For now, script.js is empty. We'll write some code into it in a minute. You can see the bootstrap.css file and some fonts. These are default files that come from bootstrap bundle. We'll use bootstrap 3 as a framework for HTML and CSS. We'll use only some basic styles, so there is no need to focus on it. Let's open our index.html file in browser. I'm using a local server for that. But opening this file directly in your browser should work as well. I will not focus on writing the HTML. We'll be using the one I prepared for this course. Instead, we'll just inspect few key elements. This is the title of the currently playing track. That's the progress bar. In order to visually update the progress, we have to update the width of the inner progress element. That's our action button. We'll use it to play and pause. And this is our tracks queue. It is basically a table where each row represents a track. Each row has four columns. Now we are ready to write some code. But first, let's comment this track. Now our queue is empty. First, we have to create a list of tracks and add few objects into it. As you can see, we define objects using object literal. So, instead of writing new object, we just write curly braces and define object's contents in it. This is a recommended way to define objects in JavaScript. Each track will have an ID, a title, and duration in seconds. As you can see, I'm not using semicolons. This is because in JavaScript they are optional. You just have to know when to use them. If you feel more comfortable, you can use them. But usually this is the decision taken by the team. Just be consistent across the project. Now we'll need a reference to the parent element for our tracks. Here it is in HTML. I'm declaring variables close to the places where they are used, so it is easier to follow the code. But the recommended way is to declare all of them at the top of their scope. In order to render each track, we can simply iterate over our list of tracks. As our parent element is a table, we add child rows using insert row method. And for creating cells inside a row, we use insert cell method. Don't forget to declare used variables. Now we have rows with empty cells. Let's fill these cells. First cell will contain the ID, second will contain track title, and third will display track duration. Our queue is almost complete. Last thing left is to add track buttons. Each button has a child element that holds a bootstrap icon. Bootstrap icons are DOM elements that have glyph icon prefixed class. You can check which icons are available in Bootstrap documentation. Buttons can have different sizes and styles. 
Now we have the Remove button. Let's add the Play button. We'll use the same code with slight changes. Again, don't forget to define new variables. That's it, we created a dynamic list of tracks. In next video, we are going to add play functionality to tracks.